Hi there, Coach Sage of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about building stamina and endurance for all distance runners. And I'm going to start off by using some examples of some of my personal shorter distance PRs. If you didn't know, I've been running for almost 20 years, any surface, any distance now. And I did used to run on flat tracks, uh, standard measured distances, uh, 400 PR, 57 seconds, maybe 56 high if it was a relay split. Uh, two flat in the 800, two flat point four, and I did lie to you guys. In the title, I wrote 415 in the mile. Technically, my PR in the mile is actually 417. This is a full 1,609 meters on an indoor track, 417 full mile. However, I did run in college a 355 1,500 meter, which, you know, I don't like to extrapolate numbers and say, well, this is equivalent to this and add up, but most people would consider the 355 a, a at least equivalent performance to a 415 mile. So I don't mean to fool you guys here. I'm going to be straight and honest. Uh, but that's where the number of the 415 mile came from. Now, I know a lot of you young whippersnappers on here uh, have run faster than me. You guys are fast. Uh, we got some really talented runners on here. Congrats to, I believe it was Soren who ran a sub nine minute two mile in high school. Congrats, man. It's really awesome. Uh, I could not crack two minutes in the 800 meters or half mile uh, to save my life. And I really tried. I really tried. I ran open 400 meters in middle school and was pretty bad at it because I wanted to be a sprinter. I'm not a sprinter. I'm a long distance runner, slow twitch guy. Uh, but the point of using these PRs in these times at shorter distances is to look at basic speed parameters and see how much you can improve in longer distance races. Maybe you're targeting a 10K half marathon or marathon or ultra marathon and beyond. Uh, it kind of gives you some extra wiggle room and potential to say, hey, if I build up my stamina, if I build up my endurance through targeted training, uh, I could really shave off a lot of time in longer distance races. So the example is I was never a great 400 meter or 800 meter runner, but you know, I could run 56 or 57 seconds for 400 meters flat out. This was in college too. And I really worked on it. Uh, and However, I could put two 60 second 400 meters back to back and run two flat for the 800, which again, nothing to write home about. I never ran this competitively. Even in high school, it was like, oh, coach throws me in a dual meet and is like, get third place, score some points for us, run a 202 800, something like that. I'm not much of a miler, not a half miler, uh, not a speed demon type of guy, but I could hold a pretty close pace to my all out 400 meter sprinting speed that I could for 800 meters, now you extrapolate that up to again to the mile, and all of a sudden you're coming through and trying to run two 207.5 or two 208 half miles, 800 meters, back to back to run that 415 or 416 mile, and that was a full mile, uh, not 1600 meters, but let's say 1600 meters. Uh, that takes a lot of stamina, and the thing that allowed me to do that, at least in college, wasn't because I was focusing on, on racing the mile or the 800 so much. It was actually after I'd done marathon training, after I'd already trained to run a 221 marathon in college, after I'd already trained 100, 120 miles a week, I was able to pull out more of my basic speed and put that into stamina, so eventually... I could run uh, a 10K at, at under 450 per mile pace. And then eventually, a couple years later, post collegiate, I was able to run a half marathon at 455 per mile pace. And so the general trend is if you could build up your stamina and endurance, specific endurance for longer distance races, when you double the distance, when you go from a 5K to a 10K or a 10K to a half marathon or a marathon or a half marathon to a marathon, you could hold a, a speed that is closer and closer to what you could hold for those shorter distance races. So an average fit guy, well, I should say a very fit athletic guy, even if he's not a distance runner, uh, a fit guy in his 20s, let's say a 25-year-old fit guy, athlete, a lot of guys could run a 15-second 100 meter. They could probably run a 30-second 200 meter, right? Four-minute mile pace. They could also, a lot of guys, maybe it takes a little training, but if they're a well-rounded athlete, uh, super fit, they could run uh, 400 meters or a quarter mile about in under 60 seconds. 
So that's sub four minute mile pace. All you have to do is string together four of those in a row now, uh, but that's where it starts to get tricky because then it's a matter of, okay, you're gonna have to probably train quite a bit to run a sub two minute 800. Maybe if you're like me and you train a ton, you're never able to run a sub two minute 800, but uh, that's where the aerobic training base starts to really play a role. And that's kind of the thing that we've always preached here at Sage Running and something you could check out in our aerobic base building plan and actually all of our plans. They're designed in a way to build your specific speed endurance and to build your stamina so you could hold a faster pace for these long distance races. And again, I'll link to in the description below if you haven't built up your mileage uh, up to the level of our some of our plans, you could do it in a progressive, safe, safer way. Uh, you can see in the description below we have a free aerobic base building plan. I'll link to it at the end of this video up in the top corner of the video. Uh, and you can download that for free from our website, sagehearing.com. That is a coaching training plan plug. But the general idea, and this has been preached for, for decades. Uh, back in the 60s, we had Arthur Lydiard, you know, revolutionary coach. All successful training plans and coaches kind of follow this philosophy of building this aerobic base first with mainly easy miles and then changing it up, periodizing it, so to speak, with different workouts at different times so that you adapt in a progressive manner and you improve over time. Uh, but the, it does come back to stamina and endurance. And you get that usually with general increases in your mileage, how many miles or kilometers you run per week. And it's something I've preached over and over on this channel for years. Uh, and we look back at these legendary coaches. Uh, we look back at U.S. marathoners back in the 70s running 100 miles a week. We look back at even like Emil Zadopek, who's running 80 by 400 meter repeats. Like, yeah, it was high intensity speed training, but it was mainly high volume training. And so you get the strength to bring out more of your sprinting speed in these longer distance events through consistent high mileage. Now, how to get higher mileage? Maybe you don't have time for that. I know a lot of you you've got school or you work uh, full time at your job, uh, a lot of hours working, you got family obligations, you're trying to squeeze in your running uh, with extra time. And it's always a trade-off with, with your time. You have to do the best you can with the time you have. And maybe that's only running 30 miles a week. Maybe that's only running 40 miles a week. Uh, but if you have big goals you want to improve, it's always good to have progressively higher mileage. And to get that without getting injured or overtraining, you generally have to run at pretty easy, relaxed paces. And that's also something I've always preached on these videos is keep your easy days easy, slowly build up so that you don't get hurt and you don't overtrain. And nothing's foolproof. Uh, you could get a stress fracture. You could uh, hurt yourself building up mileage. There's a higher risk uh, with that. But it's the it's the defining edge. It's the defining secret, so to speak, to long-term improvement, longevity in the sport, hopefully. Uh, is to have that mileage build up aerobic. These are long distance races are predominantly aerobic events. So you need to have that aerobic base, the road up aerobic adaptations, uh, not just in your heart and lungs and your capillary beds and in your blood flow, but also in the, the tendon and muscular strength of your legs and skeletal muscular system. Uh, it's a very you know, progressive manner. So that's my spiel on that. Uh, again, if you guys are young whippersnapper kids running track, you know, keep those track PRs coming. Know that if you could run a low 50 second 400 meters or you're running under 55 seconds in a 400, you could definitely probably crack two minutes in an 800. I know some of you might not quite be there yet, but if you have the potential to, to run a really fast 400 meter, you just need some more endurance to run a faster 800. Likewise, if you could run a sub two minute 800, you could be like me and hopefully run a 415 mile, if not faster in the future. And working that all the way up to what could you run for a half marathon? Well, if you could run closer to 120 in a half marathon, it's going to make your chances of running under three hours in the full marathon a lot easier. Some guys I've seen do it with 127 half marathon speed. They're able to run a sub three hour marathon still, but it takes a lot of specific stamina and endurance and specific marathon type of training to be able to pull off that kind of conversion. And there are genetic differences with muscle fiber types and what your main strength as a runner may be in certain types of events, whether you're uh, more of a sprinter type and you are really fast on the track or you're a total long distance guy and the marathon is, is where you like to 
uh, you know, really throw down with your stamina and long runs and things like that. So it does come down to some individual differences as well. But the training philosophy, the general training philosophy of building a big aerobic base and having that be able to make the big improvements and the big jumps with targeted workouts and your lactate threshold, tempo run pace, and your efficiency or your running economy uh, are going to be the big deciding parameters as you progress as a runner to chopping off larger amounts of time in long distance races, whether you're running a mile or you're running a marathon or ultra marathon and beyond. But again, it's a plug, uh, sagerunning.com. We have our free aerobic base building plan. If you're still looking to maybe work your way up from 20 miles a week to 30 or 35 miles per week or about 50 to 60 kilometers per week and you want to do that in a progressive manner, check that download out right there. I'll link to it there. We also sell uh, all our training plans more advanced, a lot more advanced training plans on the website. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Thanks so much to the Patreon supporters and stay tuned for more Sage Running training videos.